What's going on guys? Welcome back to this channel. It's all about architecture, engineering and construction. And we're also we're all about bettering the African narrative. Okay. Uh, please, uh, before we go forward, I would like you to read the title again. The title says, do not use a biodigester septic tank anyhow. And it doesn't say do not use a biodigester septic tank. Okay. So please take note of that. So I'm not literally discouraging anyone out there from using a biodigester septic tank. Actually, for a matter of fact, for quite a number of our projects, we actually use biodigester septic tanks. Uh, just a disclaimer, I am not a contractor for biodigester septic tanks. So I do not do any installations of biodigester septic tanks. What I'm really going to explain for you in this video is purely from an engineering perspective. Having a scientific understanding of how actually these biodigester septic tanks function can also help you to understand on what you need to do when you're actually using the, that biodigester septic tank, okay? Or if you already have it, uh, to take these precautions as you're actually using the biodigester septic tanks. Biodigester septic tanks are becoming quite famous because of how extremely they reduce the cost of construction because you might even have a biodigester septic tank at a cost that is as low as 1.5 million, 1.7 million, 2 million, 2.5 million, 3 million, 4 million, really depending on the size of the apartment or the size of the house or the number of users is actually going to use. So uh, it's generally cheaper to actually use a biodigester septic tanks and they also have this advantage that they never get to fill up, okay? You never have to refill your tank over a certain period of time, just like the ordinary septic tanks were in the days before. But of course, this is sometimes a misconception because I've also had scenarios where people's biodigester septic tanks have actually malfunctioned. And I'm going to be explaining shortly the things that might actually cause a biodigester septic tank to malfunction. Okay. But in general, if you use a biodigester septic tank in a way that you actually should be using it, it should be able to last for forever without even ever having to refill it. Okay. The very first thing you need to consider when you're going to use a biodigester septic tank is that um, uh, you know they're actually done in capacities. Okay. For example, if you know that you have a household and you're going to have an average of about five users per day in your house, okay. So you need to go for a biodigester septic tank that has a capacity of ten. If you, have a, if you have about 10 people that are going to be the average number of users per day, at least for your for your home, you need to go for the only the capacity of 20. You need to always go for a capacity that is higher than what your, actual home can, what your home can actually handle, okay? Of course, I know this can be tricky when it comes to apartments when you're not really uh, having the ability to control the number of people on the premises, but that should be something that you need to consider when you're actually choosing a biodigester septic tank, okay? And the very second thing that I need to mention uh, which I think is the most important is uh, we need to understand how these biodigester septic tank work because uh, let me just give you just a layman's chemistry of how this works. Eh? So the fecal water or the poo poo or the feces from your toilets actually go into the system which is actually the, the digester of the tank itself. Now that tank is literally meant to be sealed off and it has no access to air. It literally has no access to air ration. It is sealed off basically. And it's also filled, it is pre-filled at the time of installation, it's pre-filled with the bacteria that actually function under the absence of oxygen, which we actually call anaerobic bacteria. So these anaerobic bacteria actually help in breaking down the fecal matter, okay? in the absence of oxygen. That is what it, it, it literally breaks down that fecal matter into simpler substances that can easily be percolated into the ground through the, you know, through the drain pipes and all of that. Uh, the very second thing that we need to consider is that um, it's important to note this. If you are using a biodigester septic tanks, you need to learn to separate uh, what is actually being the toilet and what is being the bathroom and what is being the laundry. You need to make sure you do not have any detergents being flushed in the toilet. You need to also make sure you don't have any soap or any soapy material that is being flushed within the toilet, okay? Because uh, this soap and, uh, and detergents actually contain chemicals that will actually kill the anaerobic bacteria that is in the digester of that tank. Now remember, that tank is designed, scientifically, that tank is actually designed to have anaerobic bacteria. These are bacteria that actually function in the absence of oxygen. That's why you see that the tank is literally sealed off at the time of installation. So when you have this, this soap and you know detergents coming in, they actually kill that bacteria that is used to break down the feces or the fecal matter from your toilet to break it down into simpler substances that can be perforated into the ground, okay, in the soap pit. Uh, scientifically. So um, if these anaerobic bacteria die, it means that the chemical process is happening in your biodigester septic tank are not going to function as efficiently as they were meant to function, which means uh, it slows down and slows down in how it functions, which 
might likely cause your biodigestive to take time to actually fill up. And remember, these tanks are not designed to be refilled, just like the ordinary septic tanks, okay? So it's very important if you're going to use a biodigestive, a biodigestive septic tank, you need to make sure that you separate any detergents from using them in the toilets, okay? You can, all the water that you use for washing can be directed elsewhere, or it can be directed, can be directed straight into the soap pit, but it should never actually pass through the tank. You might not realize this in the next few years, but after about 7 to 10 years or 15 years, you might realize that you actually were doing damage to your septic tank. Now, I know um, the reason why it's, it becomes really tricky with apartments or rented properties is because you're not able to control the usage of the apartments. For example, if it's in a home or a domestic area, you know everyone in the house can know that when we are doing our laundry and our washing and all that, we do not pour all that water into the toilet. We either pour it through whichever channels except the toilet itself. But when you're dealing with things like apartment, it's difficult to control people, how people can actually use their toilets. So in that scenario, you are better off choosing a higher capacity so that even when such things happen outside your control, you still are able to manage the processes that actually happen in the tank. You're able, um, for example, if you have an apartment that's going to have about 20 people, you can choose one of 40, okay? So that even when such things happen, you're actually safe in terms of how long it might take for the tank to get filled up, or it might even never get filled up again if the numbers keep fluctuating and that works for your advantage as well, okay? So I hope you guys had something to learn from this video. Um, please uh, continue doing biodigester septic tanks with all those precautions because they're actually much cheaper than the conventional septic tanks that you've been using before and before, okay? So uh, thank you very much guys for watching and have yourself a good time.